Welcome to St. Giles Cripplegate for one of our weekly carols for the community. In this strange year, we offer hospitality to you, our friends and neighbours. Usually, we are booked up from September with corporate carol services. This year, it's different. It allows us to light the candle, have music, listen to readings, and, and, and cut enjoy the space of being in our parish church at this time. The furniture project is evolving. Had you been here last week, you could have said you were some of the last people ever to sit on the, be on the pews that had previously been at St Luke's Old Street. This week, you can say you are the first people ever to sit on the new chairs at St Giles, which will be used for concerts. This is not our final seating solution. The new benches arrive in, in January when the floor has been replaced. So we are in the middle of transforming our church and making it even more beautiful. You've been given a candle and a holder, and after the Lord's Prayer, the lights will be turned off, and Alex and I will move round the outside of the church, lighting your candles. We hope that there is enough social distancing for you at arm's length to light your neighbor's candle. In the darkness, Theo, our soloist, will sing, O come, all ye faithful and then the lights will gradually be turned on again. There's no collection. There are QR codes for donations at the back of the church or a plate for cash donations. I thank you in anticipation of your generosity. We pray. Let it be our care and our delight to hear again the message of the angels and in heart and mind to go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which is come to pass and the babe lying in a manger. Therefore let us read and mark in Holy Scripture the tale of the loving purposes of God born among us and let us pray for the needs of the whole world, for peace on earth and goodwill among all God's people. May the humility of the shepherds the faith of the Magi, the joy of the angels, and the peace of the Christ child be God's gift to us all this Christmas and always. Amen. from Isaiah. A shoot shall come out from the stock of Jesse, and the branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see, or design by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor, and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist, and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and the little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat 
straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the whole of the ass, and the weaned child shall put its hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Darkness, dark times, difficult times. An expectation, an anticipation of better times, of what is to come. Advent is a time of preparation for the coming of the Christ child. I am sure Many will be counting down the days using your advent calendars or advent candles. You burn a little bit down each day. And even though I'm aware you can't eat candles, I suppose you could, I have seen those canned calendars filled with chocolates or even stronger goodies that you can consume. The Spirit of the Lord will rest on him. That little baby born in poverty in a foreign land, a baby that would change the world and continue to change the world. As we wait in darkness in these difficult times, we must believe that these times will come to an end. And just as we are anticipating the end of the pandemic, which will end, but have no certainty of when that day will be, we also await the birth of Christ, that light that comes into the world, and we count down with certainty to Christmas Day. Our reading from the book of Isaiah this evening, which was written hundreds of years prior to the birth of Christ, should give us all hope. It foretells God's coming among us. Knowledge that the darkness will come to an end. Hope that the Christ child will dwell among us and all that he will bring. Wisdom, knowledge, righteousness and equity, to mention a few. As we seem to be told daily, celebrating this Christmas is going to be different this year for all of us. Unlike the heavily pregnant Mary and Joseph who had to go to Bethlehem, which was a 70 mile journey from Nazareth to take part in the census, as ordered by the government of that time, we are all having to avoid large community gatherings as ordered by our government. And for some this Christmas will be very difficult. But the account at the heart of it and its meaning remains the same as it always had. It's maybe the reason that you have come here this evening to hear the Christmas story again in this wonderful place where the account of Jesus' birth has been told every Advent for over a thousand years. Here, the miracle of Christmas is ingrained in the fabric of this wonderful building. The earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. The Lord's coming this Christmas is for all of us, wherever we are, whoever we are, rich or poor, old or young. So let us all hold on to the hope of that Christ child, the light in the darkness. A light that we need more than ever this year. A light that is certain to illuminate all of our lives. Amen.
In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favoured one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words to her and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favour with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth. And so the story goes. Check out your Christmas cards if you've got friends who send you that sort of card to see what this scene looked like, this encounter looked like back then in the 14th century. From earliest times, artists haven't stinted themselves. They've depicted this scene in, set in architectural splendor. The arches of a portico with views into a simple domestic interior, a landscape of classical beauty with a few peacocks, against which Mary is positioned reading. A 12, 13-year-old young woman reading. In early paintings, it is Gabriel who is the main figure. Well, of course, Wings take up some space, and a, a halo needs importance. There Gabriel is, standing in the foreground, and Mary sits away from the viewer. Gabriel splendid with his wings and halo. And at this point in the story, it is Gabriel who knows what's going to happen. Mary does not. The advantage of the informed messenger over the recipient, the sent one with purpose, whereas Mary sits closed in on herself, apprehensive. In some paintings, Gabriel holds a scepter like Mercury, the messenger God. So what is this dynamic between the one who gives news and the one who receives it, as those of us constantly sending emails, WhatsApp, other messages, texts. What is the dynamic between those of us who send messages and those of us who receive a message? Where is the interplay of power? 
the same figure who arrives unannounced to a young woman in a small town of no distinction. Don't let that architectural per perfection and the peacocks fool you. Time passes and it changes. Mary becomes the dominant figure. The Annunciation, paintings of the Annunciation are now about her and not about Gabriel, the sent one. There are other clues that artists use to make sure we understand what is going on. The ray of light from the sending place that falls upon Mary. The dove, a symbol of the Holy Spirit descending in the light. Gabriel may carry a lily, or there is some in a pot for the spectator to see and ponder. The lily, symbol of purity, and Mary's flower. But this was also the flower of Florence. And Siennese artists, Siena being a rival of Florence, sometimes portray Gabriel with an olive branch instead. These still serene paintings, some of which make it to be our Christmas cards, have just got more turbulent. Gabriel, Mary, who is the more powerful? Lily versus the olive branch, Florence versus Siena. And all that is going on behind two or three very familiar verses from the Christmas story. Theological debate and political rivalry set before the faithful as they say their prayers.
we stand. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the Word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. We sit.
Let us pray. Let us pray for all people of faith and goodwill that in these seasons of Advent and Christmas we may, we may be renewed and so fulfill God's work in this world. Let us pray this night for the people of the world who bear responsibility for its present and its future. In politics and healthcare, in finance and industry, in our respect of the planet, and in education and in maintaining law and order that they may be inspired by the message of Christmas to work together for the establishment of justice, well-being, and peace everywhere. And let us pray for all in special need, the sick, the anxious, the sick, the, the bereaved, and those whose lives have been changed beyond recognition financially. We commend all whom we love and those who have asked for our prayers to the unfailing mercy of our loving God. And say together, as Jesus himself taught us, our Father Hello, in heaven, Hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come. Your, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us, us today, today our daily bread. bread. Forgive, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The church will be darkened as the candle comes round. Near you, please hold out your candle and stand as the candles are lit through the church.
Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you. Scatter the darkness from before your path and make you ready to meet him when he comes in glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and all whom you love this night and always. Amen.